Sporting Group 1. What a way it is going to be to start the day. <laughs> Estimated weight, 100 minutes. All right. There's the big golf ball in the sky. And hidden off over to the left somewhere, the big blue box that we will be going into very shortly. Hey, 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 it is Uncle Mad back at the Walt Disney World Resort, making our way into Epcot, where this morning we secured boarding group one for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Run. Literally, like the main thing we were wanting to do on this trip. Not sure if we were gonna get to do it because all the virtual queue situation and literally got it right out of the gates. It's gonna be the very first thing we do on this trip. Heading in the park a little bit before park open. Our estimated return time was gonna be 8.40 there. So we got about 40 minutes to go till then. But what a turn of events to be worried and be like, oh, I don't know if we're gonna get it. I don't know, we might not even get to ride it the whole time we're down here. And boarding group one, first attempt. Thank you, Lynn Testa. And there it is, the beautiful new addition to the Epcot skyline. I think it's an improvement if I'm being honest. It'd be weird if there wasn't like a big blue box right there. Got here just in time for the never ending Flower and Garden Festival. Good Epcot. All right, let's see what uh, the free version of Genie has on deck for our day today. Okay, after all that, here's what we got. Here's what's recommended. We've got Cosmic Rewind. I don't know why I can't say that right anymore. Breakfast at Cape May, looking forward to that. Then the next thing it recommends we do is Soarin' at two o'clock, Living with the Land at 3.15, Journey at 4.10, maybe a little snack, a little grub at Regal Eagle at 5.05, Frozen at 6.05, Grand Fiesta at 7.50, and then Harmonious at 45. It's rude, it doesn't ever want us to ride Test Track. Sad. And the madness has begun at Rope Drop. Everybody's going straight to ride Spaceship Earth, I guarantee it. First time getting a look at the Connections Cafe, the new Starbucks coffee shop here at Epcot. It's a very nice, clean look. I like the setup here. All right, this is it, the moment we've been waiting for, the first trip into the Play Pavilion. Nope, just kidding. We're riding Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. I still can't say that word for some reason. There we go, I knew it would work eventually. Q's moving so fast, we're bypassing the Xandar display. Got everybody moving through so fast, we're missing some of the stuff. We really just flew through the queue and here to the first kind of presentation room. There are some people in front of us that were already sitting down. I think they're going to have a long day. Commander of the Nova Corps, on behalf of all Xandarians, I hope you have enjoyed exploring the wonders of Xandar. Epcot. Does anyone know what they call themselves? What? I'm on. Someone needs to tell me what I'm on. <laughs> Welcome, Epcot Terrace. Here we go. You made it. I mean, of course you did. Nova Prime, they're ready. Excellent. What you see before 
is the cosmic generator. Code red. Oh god, they took the generator. And call the guard. This whole thing's a disaster. Now. They took it. We're screwed. There's no they took the generator. We're screwed. We're stuck here now. Turn off that alarm. I've got an important transmission coming in. Hey, what's up, Nova Corp? Our cosmic generator has been stolen. What? How? What did we think of that? That thing's got to be worth a fortune. I am Groot. Good question. Yeah, who do you think took it? Perhaps that really big man outside your shed. Well, that is a big man. I need to alert Nova Prime. Oh. Basically, a walk on. Here we freaking go. Oh, okay. I'm locked onto your vehicle. We'll be right behind you. Nothing to worry about. Unless we cannot stop this unusually large man. Then you're likely doomed. Good luck. You're gonna need it. I like how the person who easiestly could have been a part of this, Bradley Cooper, just completely skipped out on it. It's like all the actors that had to be there in the person were like, yeah, we'll sign up, we'll do it. And Bradley Cooper's like, no thanks. Don't feel like doing any voice acting today. What have we done? I think we're jumping back. Uh oh, here we go. It is meaningless. Well, then, welcome to the Guardians of the Galaxy. Bye. Hey. Okay. No exiting through the gift shop this morning. Treasures of Xandar not currently open, but the merch is over at the Creation Shop. All right, so that was an excellent attraction, a perfect new addition to Epcot. I know a lot of people aren't happy about the IP coming in, but they did everything they could to make it fit. Ride is great. Exactly the type of ride Epcot needed. A little bit of a thrill, it's not like crazy. I can't put it ahead of Rise of Resistance, but that's not a fair comparison. Rise of Resistance is like nothing else that's ever happened. Friend I'm with pointed out some good points. If it had like real animatronics and not just 100% screen based stuff, it might take another step forward, but great ride, great addition. No issues with the motion sickness for me, so that, you know, some people have weaker stomachs than others. Well worth it. Great addition to Epcot. I want to do 7.5, 8 out of 10. Definitely want to do it again before we leave. Yeah, I want to do it again at 1 o'clock. We'll try the 1 o'clock. No better follow up to a trip through the galaxy than to casually soar around the world with Patrick Warburton. I, don't, I can't talk anymore. I've lost my voice. Okay, you see the whole day. This wall blocked my view. <laughs> Gosh, there we go. That's a little bit better view of the signage there. A soaring we shall go. <laughs> Put your hat away, sir. Next, fasten your seat belts, inserting them into the buckle on your right. It's actually not crooked from this seat. Actually, not bad. Yeah. But you do get your steps in just walking to go ride the ride for how long the queue is, but Great ride. Classic ride. Love it every time. We're on a weird trajectory today where every ride we've done has been subsequently slower and more calm than the one before. It's a good sequence. It's a good way to do it. Do a thrill ride, a little bit slower, slower still, and then pick it back up. Some, like the water lily, thrive in wet, sloppy areas and waterways. All the way with the land. It's the banana it's head Mickey. on both sides of the boat. And then there's something I don't know how to pronounce. 28 million tons of bananas are gored. 
both of that hybrid tilapia and hybrid bass. That means they can run on gas or electricity. She interrupted my joke. All right, so now that we've communed with nature, I'm gonna go to France to visit with a little rat. These intros are terrible. Way too hokey. I gotta clean it up. Try to be funny. I'm just not funny. Maybe that's what it is. Sad. This is also sad. We should be able to get there a lot faster, but we're gonna have to like go like a mile around the crevice that exists in the middle of Epcot still. This is what Justin missed out on by not coming on this trip. Alice in Wonderland. Time to go for a ride with the rat. It's gonna be my second time doing this after experiencing it for the first time when we came back in October. Getting our own private loading area, the normal exit area. Don't see this every day. All these people thought they were gonna get to ride, but we already got our cart, so ha 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 Here we go. It'd be funny if we did that one little rip around. They're like, all right, thank you for riding. <laughs> oh no. addition to the Disney canon of dark rides. Fun for the whole family. Once again, much like Guardians of the Galaxy, exactly the type of ride they needed to add here at Epcot. But now, it's time for the most fun part of the entire day. It's time to go eat a lot of breakfast. I'll remind everybody, every time I do a vlog here, my dad bought a Guinness at the Rose and Crown. Walked down to this little seating area, took two, two sips of it, and then poured it into the water because he drinks nothing but Miller Lite. I wouldn't know anything about that though because I'm not a drinker. I'm having flashbacks to the October trip as we make our way out of the International Gateway, but not to go to Boardwalk. We're heading this way because we've got breakfast at Cape May Cafe. Pretty excited for this breakfast because the last time I had Cape May, it was shortly after the reopening and they weren't back to full buffet service yet. It was just like the family style platters where they'll bring you more food if you want it, but it just wasn't right. So, getting to see the full buffet today. Gonna eat a lot of food. All right, now if you follow the channel, you know I am not a drinker, but if there's a specialty cocktail on the menu, I think I have to try it for the sake of content. So, I will be having the sweet pea today. I do it for the people. All right, here we go. Plate numero uno. A little bit of everything. These little poached egg topped hash brown muffins are incredible. This is what we missed last time you said. Got so good. Cheers. The sweet pea is not as sweet as I would have expected it to be. It's just a very refreshing beverage. Paper straws are terrible. Okay, round two. Mm. Mm. And now we have tapped out. For now, though, we might just sit here for like 45 minutes and be ready for another round. I would currently describe my status as that of a broken man. I've eaten too much food, I want to take my shirt off, but I don't think that'd be appropriate in the restaurant. I got my cocktail for free because it was missing a flower, so shout out Dottie. There she goes right there. Cast compliment to her for getting my beverageino free for me for not getting my edible flower that I probably didn't really want anyway because it kind of sounded gross, but Cape Bay Cafe, that was 100 times better than the last time we were here. Buffet puts that on their inversion to shame. 
I died. I'm gonna be dead at the table. Come get my body. It's beautiful to see the rose and crown back to its former glory. Nature is healing. Uh, if you know me, you know I'm not a drinker, but we were popping through England and a very reliable source told me you have to try Fireball and Cider. So here we go, cheers. That's delicious. Why do you Guys, my lips don't work. I got a hole in my lips. I pierced my lips when I was a teenager. I could drink 20 of these. And I might, but I'm not a drinker, so I won't. The sportsman's shop is back open, but Fortunately, it seems to just sell Disney UK merch. They don't seem to have any soccer gear like they used to. Dang. It's always cool to see like Manchester United stuff out in the wild. That's a pretty cool spirit jersey though. All right, we've popped into Club Cool, so you know what that means. Time for a quick call to Beverly. Here's to you, Beverly. Tastes like uh, if you somehow burned Sprite. If you burned Sprite, that's what Beverly that tastes like. Okay, we stopped at Farmer's Feast to try this highly recommended hibiscus lemonade cocktail. Not a drinker, but it was highly recommended, so we gotta give it a shot. That's strong. Strong but refreshing. When in Mexico, you have to pop into La Cava de Tequila. And even though I'm not a drinker, I do have to try this avocado margarita. That's delicious. Mm. The boys are all here. They're all together again. It's good to see them. They got a new march on this ride. Mark's just hit better on this ride. I'm not drinking though. Here's a Disney secret secret for you. The Einstock White Ale is the old ass beer. Okay, so we just got off Frozen. I got more drenched on that than I have ever. Borderline Splash Mountain levels of soakage. But before we even got on the ride, this couple who I don't think spoke English got on next to us and they like apparently didn't know that only a certain amount of people were supposed to be on each row and they just smashed us up against the wall like there was room for that many people to sit there. It was fun. It was fun being squished into the row like What's up? It is Uncle Mad from the future. Filmed all these vlogs as kind of like each vlog was gonna be one day at the parks, but this one just got a little too long. I try to keep these like 15 to 25 minutes tops because I don't even wanna watch TV or movies or anything for much longer than that. So I definitely don't think anybody would wanna watch my vlogs for much longer than that. So this has seemed like as good a stopping point as any to cut off part one of day one in Orlando, because after this, we made our way over to Hollywood Studios. It was kind of a natural transition from going from one park to the other. So stick around. Tomorrow, we'll be back with the vlog from our night at Hollywood Studios, as well as Disney Springs. Thank you for watching, and always make sure you're subscribed with the bell turned on for notifications so you don't miss part two. We will see you then.